Now, if we look at the induced two norm, L2 norm, in discrete time, so for discrete time systems, the two induced norm is can be shown to be given by this expression. Instead of the uh, the supremum over all omega, omega being uh, from minus infinity to infinity, we can actually restrict our attention because omega appears in the um, exponent here that this exponent basically um, has unique values only between pi and minus pi. So we can drop the soup and use the max and we can restrict our attention to minus pi to pi. And so we have the largest singular value or basically the two norm of the transfer function evaluated on the unit circle is actually what this is talking about here. So this is the this is the induced L2 norm for the um, for the system for the transfer function H. So if we assume the state model given here, so m uh, m inputs, p outputs, n states. Here's our transfer function. Notice that it's in this case it's strictly proper. The um, L infinity induced norm we saw was given by this expression. The L2 induced norm was given by this expression. Okay, and it's important to ask the question, how do we actually compute these quantities? For example, how would I compute this? How would I compute this? Well, for the L infinity induced norm, this quantity, there's in general no straightforward way to compute this. Okay. There's not, a, there's not a nice handy way. And for, for example, if you're given the transfer function, getting h i j of t involves taking an inverse Laplace transform. Then we have to compute this integral over all time. Actually, we have to take the absolute value and then take the integral over all time. This can get really complicated because it, we can be switching signs. And so we have to keep track of those sign switches. And so this can be really complicated in general to compute. So in general, there is no straightforward way to compute it, but generally we also we don't need to compute it. That is, we only need to know if the transfer function has poles outside the stability region for Bible stability. So in, in general, that's, that's where we're at with this. So in terms of system-induced norm, this is, this is a, a very general one, very important one, and if we could, if we could find a way of computing it, that'd be awesome. We could, it's not that difficult to compute numerically but um, it, it is fairly uh, exhaustive to do so, but th that is one way to do it. You can simulate the system um, and then do this calculation. So in other words, take the impulse response by simulation and then do this calculation um, out to a certain point where, it is com where the system is settled basically to zero. Just compute the integral over that and then you have an approximation of this quantity. So that's that's the uh, basic basic idea behind a system induced norm. We're going to talk next more in detail about the L2 induced norm, which is a very important